Welcome back inside Studio 42. Mike Johnson, Robert Flores. Let's bring in NHL Network insider Elliot Friedman, who joins us now. Elliot, good to see you. The league announcing that nine games in early January would be postponed for Canadian teams. What's yeah. the league's reasoning behind that? Robert, it's pretty simple. This is economics. And I know sometimes people uh, hate hearing that, but, you know, uh, economics matters and uh, the revenue matters. And right now we're looking at situations across the country in Canada where Montreal would be able to play with no fans. Every time the Canadians play, it's a home gate of approximately $2.3 million. You're going to, you don't want to lose those four games. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, when they play home games, it's about three and a half million dollars. They're only taking one away for now. Uh, they've kept two of them at home. Those are two games I think that we asked for our network for them to stay. Um, the other team there, the Jets, uh, they basically were told they were going to be able to have a maximum of 250 fans at a game. So they've had a couple of games postponed and moved back. And again, Robert, I know people hate hearing it's about the money, but when you're running a league, the money matters. And yeah. it matters, matters yeah. for the owners, it matters for the players, it matters for everybody. And if you can find an alternative, I can hardly fault them for trying to do it. Elliot, and that's just it. It's not like it doesn't matter to the players. It's very important to them. They're trying to work off this debt on escrow and everything else. So they need as much revenue as possible. You showed the games canceled, including Montreal, basically all next week. Are they going to play next week? Or are they just going to have another week off? It sounds like, Mike, the last information I heard tonight was they were going to play well, they played that in Tampa. They're going to play in a couple nights in Florida. And I believe they're going to have the, the rest of the time off. Mm. So it looks like they're going to have a break. And then we'll see where we what we do about resuming uh, games, either over the uh, what was supposed to be the Olympic break or jamming them in before the end of the season. Um, I know that there was there's supposed to be a, a shared schedule, a new schedule between the league and the Players Association over today and tomorrow. So we should get an idea over the next few days. Uh, what's what it's right. going to look like and how that's going to be approved. And Elliot, the league also announcing today that tomorrow's game between the Red Wings and Islanders that is postponed. What's the latest on that front? Well, the Islanders, uh, the Red Wings said it was uh, the Islanders situation. The Islanders did have a couple players go into protocol today. So, I mean, right now what we're seeing, guys, is there's cases all over the place. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter how well you take care of yourself. Uh, you know, basically, you can get it. And, um, you know, I know people, like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm surrounded by people now who have mm -hmm. it. And I know they're very careful people. So it's not like just because you're a hockey player, you're going to be able to avoid this. And, you know, basically, you know, we're see it, it, the amazing thing to me is what's happening all over all, all sorts of different sports. Like, you have teams trying to play through it. You have leagues canceling games. Um, you have games like the football game between the Saints uh, and the Dolphins the other night, the basketball game between the Raptors and the Cavaliers the other night. Um, you know, the Canadians were really shorthanded tonight, although they put up a hell of an effort. Uh, nobody's escaping this right now. Yeah. The cases are all over the place, and you just have to play through it. All right, and th Elliot, that's just it. Got to figure out how to play through it. They don't want to pause. They don't want to shut it down. They don't want to bubble. Then those aren't really feasible alternatives. We're reading in the real world, CDC guidelines have been shortened from 10 days to five days when you have a positive uh, result. We've seen the, the NFL trying to adjust very quickly their protocols, the NBA doing the same. Where is the NHL, the PA, the U.S. government, and maybe most importantly the Canadian government when it comes to trying to introduce this league-wide? Well, I, I think that conversation has really begun in earnest in the National Hockey League and what they can do, Mike. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. Like, one of the things that some of the Canadian teams have said to me is, well, first of all, if you heard Lou Lamorell the other day, he said that the idea of, uh, asymptomatic players being allowed to cross the border um, if they've tested positive. I think everybody in the NHL knows that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just not the way that this is going to work. But, I, I, you know, I do think they're going to look at shorter quarantines. Can you come out earlier, like the CDC has said, and, you know, the NBA is doing and the NFL is doing. But what we can't get, a, at least as of today, and I know they are talking about is, do they think this is going to be able to work in Canada? Are, like, you know, are we going to, like, one, a couple of the Canadian teams reached out to me today, and, you know, they're saying that the thing that worries about them is the loss of competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, what happens, for example, if players in the States can come out of protocol sooner than players in Canada can? And, and is that fair? And, you know, I'll tell you this. I, I think there's going to be, I think the players, and you can see it, they're starting to get more bold and they're starting to say it more. Um, you know, they, they want to play. They, they want to they come out of protocol sooner and they want to play. 
I think it's going to be a delicate, delicate dance because they have a bigger problem with the Canadian border than any other league does. But I think they are going to try to see if they can do something. And I can see the players saying, you know what, we forget the competitive advantage. We want to play. And if some teams are benefited from different local rules, which we've seen before with attendance and other things, then maybe they just go down the road. I, I could see the players not having the authority, but very publicly push and say, you know what? So if you can get out of it in Dallas fast, you can get out of it in Winnipeg. Well, too bad for Winnipeg. And, and Elliot, there's this, that the, the league and the NHLPA agreeing on the formation of taxi squads on Sunday. Yeah. How is that going to work, and how will this affect teams going forward? Well, I, I think what it does is it gives you the opportunity to bring players around and have players travel and practice with you if you're in a situation where you're shorthanded or you're worried about you know, just the overall size of your roster. And I think, Robert, where that could really happen is, for example, if you're a West Coast team and you're traveling east and your American Hockey League team is in the West too, you can take a couple extra players with you and not have to worry about bringing them over the, all the way across the country or how to get there if you have an outbreak. I think it's just a safety, it's a safety zone. And, you know, the other thing too, I just wanted to add to what Mike just said, guys, is that I think the other way around, I think you're going to see the U.S. players say, look, why should we have to say, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to stay in quarantine longer and protocol longer when nobody else in the country has to? I, I think that's going to be a very difficult thing yeah. for anyone here to manage. Uh, Elliot, one more thing to me, and you can know where I'm coming from. As a player who was played in the NHL when Olympics were going on, never had to go, I always appreciated a nice two-week break in the middle of every year. <laughs> Do we know... We know they're not going to the Olympics. We know there's games going to be played. But will the players be with their clubs for that entire three weeks, the no. entire month? Or will they have a week built in or 10 days? Or will teams have breaks during that month? There will be a break, Mike. I don't know yet how long it'll be. I was told approximately a week, give or take a day or so. But there will be a break, and then they'll resume playing. But, yeah, no, it won't be a full. They were promised that there would still be right. some sort of, of break or pause or vacation time for there. There it is. Vacation time. That's what we need. <laughs> Everyone loves I, a vacation. I know, Mike, I know where you're coming from. You know we work together. Yes. I know you. I know you. Yes. NHL Network Insider Elliot Freeman. Go, Elliot. Go jump on the bike again, Elliot. Sorry yes. we interrupted your Peloton ride. Oh, my gosh. I mean, so you, I look, you look great, but uh, yeah, were you riding outside? i got to explain this. No, i got to explain this. So I... I, I, I knew I was coming on at 10 Eastern. I did a Peloton at 9.15. The Montreal-Tampa game was so great. I got caught up watching it. I looked up. It was 9.57. I'm like, oh, no, I'm caught. This is the worst I'm ever going to look, which is really saying something. Wow. Hey, Happy New Year to you, man. We appreciate the time. All right, guys. Robert, Mike, thanks very much, guys. You too. All the best. All the best. Happy New Year, listeners you and viewers. It. The defending champions in this event, the United States, as you see here, this tweet uh, indicates they had to forfeit their game against Switzerland because of a mandated team quarantine following a positive test result of two of its players. So that game was postponed or for forfeited and a loss there for the United States. With more on Team USA and what happens next, here's our John Rosen. We're here at the Centrium in Red Deer, where the temperatures have warmed up a little bit, but participation in the tournament has cooled off. Unfortunately, this USA team has received a couple of positive COVID tests and as such have to quarantine back in the hotel that has canceled today's game against Switzerland and thrown into question tomorrow's game against Sweden. That game scheduled to be played at 7.30 p.m. Normally, there would be a two-day mandatory quarantine for any team in which players test positive. However, we are still waiting word for an official statement on whether tomorrow's game will be able to go through. That should come in tomorrow morning. Uh, the team's quarantine status will be evaluated by the IIHF to determine whether they are able to play. USA 1-1 one one now in this tournament because of the one nothing forfeit loss. That places them in second place still in this tournament. Tied with Russia on Switzerland, also 1-1 one one so far. Goal differential, though, USA is even, currently placing them second. The determination for seeding going into the elimination round after points, goal differential, goals four, and then their seeding going into the tournament. It's a little bit too early to say how this drastically affects USA. Their potential seeding for the next round, US after Sweden also has a game on New Year's Eve against Russia. There were two positive tests on this U.S. team. They are now testing once again for false positives. Switzerland in mass also went down to the testing room earlier today. They were tested once again. Everything came back fine. They're back on the ice right now for practice. John Van Beesbrook, GM of the U.S. team, made a statement saying, 
we're operating in an ever-changing landscape, and that's very challenging. We followed the tournament protocol from the outset, and we'll continue to do everything we can to ensure our players have the opportunity to compete at the World Junior Championship. This tournament being played at 50% capacity per provincial regulations. Also, no food, no drink allowed to be purchased. And though we do call this a bubble, and all the teams are undergoing such strict protocol, it's not an official airtight bubble. There are still people that can come and go within the hotel. There are other people not affiliated with the tournament at the hotel, but each team to the strictest degree is isolating, staying away from the general population. And even though they're not technically quarantining before this last uh, positive test, they are in a sense, being uh, isolated in their own hotel room. So everyone doing the best they can to make sure that this tournament goes through should have more updates early Wednesday morning. All right, John, we appreciate that report. Let's take a look at the Group B, group B standings and, and what it looks like after the United States forfeit uh, earlier today. And, and, and Johnny, obviously, uh, setting aside what organizers are going to do, determining on what the medical and the tests and all that, right. what, what's the impact here? Uh, for Team USA as they try to defend their championship? Well, I, I think the key in the round robin play of the World Juniors is to finish in the top two, preferably first, but top two in your group because then you get a much easier quarterfinal opponent. It's going to be a very difficult for the United States to do that now, especially if they can't play against Sweden. So one loss against Switzerland, it's going to be hard to make up. The goal differential, which they probably would have added to, which mm -hmm. is a tiebreaker down the stretch, they have Russia and Sweden to play still so if they finish third or if they can't play against Sweden and finish fourth well you know who you're going to get when you finish fourth Canada Canada or Finland yeah and, and that's a very difficult quarterfinal opponent and that's kind of what's at stake for for the Americans right now but you know in the short term you know these guys have committed so much to being there and they want to just get on the ice and compete and try to defend their title so uh, hopefully the testing comes back good tomorrow if they can't play against Sweden they can at least play against Russia and continue on their journey um, but it's tough. It's everyone in the world is dealing with it. And yeah. so are the juniors. Hey, real quick, if you're uh, coaching that uh, Team USA, what are you telling those young men right now? Um, we knew we'd have to be pliable mm -hmm. to be good at this. We've all had to be that in the world the yeah. last couple of years. So we can't focus on what's happened. We can't feel sorry for ourselves and yeah. woe is us. You know what? Let's stay away from each other or stay away from the public. Let's go through the protocols. Let's be safe would be the first message. And then... Let's use the days. Yeah. Let's get focused. Let's get rested. And let's know what's in front of us because we have a bigger challenge. Um, but it's not insurmountable. And how much better would it feel if you pull this off? Absolutely. With this kind of, these kind of obstacles in your way. So, I mean, that's probably the message right now. 